Hi everybody, thanks for tuning into the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge exclusive Black Series Doc Ondor. If Saturday morning cartoons fueled your imagination as a kid and powers your action figure collecting now as an adult, then you're in the right place. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to Saturday Morning Toy Collector. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing. Alright, here we have a front of the package and while I would love to throw up an Amazon link or a Big Bad Toy Store link for you guys to go and purchase one of these online, uh, unfortunately I can't. Apparently this is only sold in the Disney parks at the uh, Doc Ondar's store itself in Galaxy's Edge. It was for a short time sold on um, Disney's Shop Disney page, but I think uh, it is long since sold out. Um, but uh, I do know that there are lots of people out there who will um, like go to Disney and shop for you and send it to you. So if you know any of those people out there, if you can find one on Instagram or uh, Facebook, uh, you could definitely do so. I happen to get this off of eBay, and I'm so glad I did because this figure is amazing. Spoiler alert. But let's take a look at the front of the package. I love this artwork here. It looks fantastic. It's such a beautiful like black and white uh, pencil drawing. It just looks incredible. Whoever did the artwork, kudos to to you, sir or madam. Uh, I love the little Doc Ondor logo down in the bottom, which looks really cool. Uh, flipping around on the side, you can see that he stands 6.7 inches tall, which is he is a big boy. He is a tall one and all the accessories that he comes with. Flipping around here on the back, you just see a nice like digital render uh, and it just points out that he does have soft goods uh, amongst other things that he does come with. Uh, the front does have a flap that opens up uh, where you can see that same picture from the back right there in the front. It'd have been really cool if this had a window um, so you could see the figure inside. That'd have been kind of neat, but you know, that artwork does look nice. And then here on the side, uh, you can see the front flap uh, that's got a little write up. So if you want to pause and read that, you certainly can, which is uh, really cool. I'm glad they did that. It's a very nice deluxe package here. Speaking of all of his accessories, this is what he comes with. He comes with a uh, what, what looks to be like a really dirty, like battle worn um, phase one clone trooper helmet. He does come with a sword. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of that sword or the, the lore behind it. So if you do, let me know in the comments down below. I really appreciate that. And you can see that he comes with a Sith and a Jedi um, holocron, which these these are really cool. They're very neat. Uh, we're going to zoom in and take a closer look at these in just a little bit. I didn't want to just leave these to a single picture of the the, uh, the the accessories. I wanted to get in close and look at some of the detail on those things. So here's the figure just standing straight up and down, um, looking really good. There's lots of really good sculpted detail, lots of really good paint detail on this guy. He is just absolutely fantastic. And, you know, if you just wanted to plop this guy into your book of Boba Fett collection and have him be like the mayor of uh, whatever city that was where they had like the governor or the mayor or the magistrate was the uh, Ithorian, uh, you could certainly just plop him in uh, and do so because I think he looks very much the part. And I think, well, we probably will get one of those figures one day because I think Hasbro is going to get a lot of use out of this mold. Flipping around here on the side, you can see some of the detail on the side of the head and on the back of the head his mouth on each side and uh, just how he stands. Uh, he's he's a very well-balanced figure. He's got big feet and doesn't want to topple over with that being so, you know, having such a big, large head. Uh, and I love the way the, uh, the hood folds down and just kind of hangs in the back. It's very, very nice and lays uh, very realistically. Uh, and I like the way that it's perfectly cut at the feet, so it bunches up over the feet, but the feet still kind of poke out, and you can see a little detail there. I, I kind of dig that. Uh, flipping around here on the back, just so you can see, again, how that hood lays the back of the head and how that sash comes around the back of the uh, the plastic cloak, which is over top the, um, the soft goods cloak. Punching in really close here on the head, you can see some of that detail. This is probably one of the best painted Star Wars Black Series figures of all time. The, the 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 detail on his face and skin, the bubbles, the wrinkles, the creases, like everything just looks so beautiful and so perfectly painted and sculpted. This is an incredible mold that I, I am sure Hasbro is going to get a lot of use out of. 
punching in a little bit closer on the details on his necklace this is just a singular piece it is loose it goes around his neck uh, but you can see there's like a little tooth or a claw uh, lots of little trinkets and little doodads hanging off there and a little silver uh, pin on his blue sash which looks really nice just again the detail the sculpting the paintwork is absolutely incredible um, you can take the uh, necklace off uh, you can take the cloak off, the outer rubber cloak, and you can take his soft goods cloak off, and this is what you're left with. Uh, you can see he does have some wraps around his wrist and this gray kind of torn sleeve look around his arms and uh, knees. Uh, it looks really nice. Flipping around here on the back, you can just see the simplicity of the, the cloak underneath or his tunic underneath. Um, and just lots of detail, uh, the wraps, the fingers, the wrinkles in the pants, the, the detail on, on his lower legs and feet, and just looks absolutely incredible. Those look like uh, Big Bird's feet to me. That's, that's what it reminds me of. Um, and then I wanted to take this shot right here to show you uh, the way this figure could be adapted in the future um, to give us uh, a more classic um, hammerhead that we know. Uh, I believe um, Mamon Nadon, is that his name? Uh, is that what the name that they give us uh, when we had this head in, or this character in the classic Kenner collection? Um, I would love to see them do uh, this colorway in the future and give us that classic uh, hammerhead uh, look. I think he looks great, and I think that, that, that we're definitely going to be getting a lot of use out of this mold. I've said it a hundred times, and I'll, I just, I'll go to my grave believing it, because Hasbro's not going to go to all the trouble to tool up this new mold uh, and then not get as much use out of it as possible. All right, taking a closer look at uh, Doc Ondar here with his robes on, and this is how he articulates. The head can only go up about that far. He can hit the T-pose with his cloak on, no problem. The arms do go all the way around, um, so he articulates nicely. We're going to actually um, take a look here in a little bit of how he articulates underneath the robes, but I just wanted to show you how, uh, just sort of like how the range of motion works um, with his robes and how uh, hindered it is. Um, but other than that, I mean, he, he stands nice, he looks nice. I mean, this guy's not going to be in any kind of crazy poses anyway, unless you're going to sort of like make him into a Jedi. But I did want to show off some size comparisons here. So here he is um, with Luke. Uh, no problem. Uh, stands really nice next to Luke and looks good. Um, and then with a couple of other Galaxy's Edge characters, here we have uh, Hondo Onaka and... Um, we do have uh, the DJ droid, which I'm sorry, I forget his name. I, I, can never, I can never remember this guy's name, but I wanted to bring in a little DJ droid um, and just kind of show off how he stands next to some other um, uh, Galaxy's Edge characters. All right, so taking a closer look at old Hammerhead here, uh, Doc Ondar himself. I just wanted to show you how easy it is to uh, pop the head off. It's just on a little simple ball joint. And I wanted to show you how the figure uh, moves and articulates uh, underneath the cloak. Uh, so the head's got lots of movement, can tilt and rotate and do all the stuff you need. The arms can go all the way around. He can hit that T-pose, no problem. Uh, he uh, doesn't have the upper bicep swivel, but he does have a hinge and swivel at the arm, and you can get well past 90, which is really nice. He does have the, uh, the horizontal um, hinges on the wrist. Um, which is all you're going to need for this guy. He does have a slight um, butterfly joint, and uh, but you know that's about as far over in, as, as you know in front of his body as he can get. There's no upper torso cut, but you do get this um, lower waist um, ball peg uh, articulation point. So he can only lean forward and back just a little bit. He does not have the drop down articulation on the legs. He does have the upper bice or the upper thigh cut, and he has a single joint at the knee. But he does get. Um, past 90 so that's nice it also has a swivel there and he has a massive ankle rocker and uh, pivot uh, for the feet so you can definitely get him into some nice um, poses but those big feet are definitely going to hold this guy up to where he uh, does not fall over uh, at all he is very sturdy and stands nice and I uh, just wanted to show you guys what he looks like underneath the robes and how he articulates um, underneath all right, let's take a closer look at his accessories here. Here is that uh, Phase 1 Clone Trooper helmet, and uh, it is completely hollow, so if you wanted to pop this uh, onto one of your uh, Clone Troopers, I'm sure you could um, with no problem. It's a pretty sturdy piece of uh, plastic. It's, it's not altogether that pliable. 
uh, which I like. It's pretty sturdy. Here's that really nice sword. And again, my apologies for not doing my research. I don't know the lore behind this sword, who it belonged to, what it is, but it does look really nice. I love the uh, the gold painting on the on the hilt right there, and then the the, the wraps on the on the shaft looks really nice. Um, here is that um, Sith holocron. You can see there's some nice texturing on the red plastic. The gold paint looks really nice. Um, my camera doesn't want to focus today. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it looks it looks really cool. I love the the detailing there. And they did the same thing here on the Jedi holocron. You can see that there's a nice like square designs and textures on the blue cube itself, and then that really nice gold detail around. Uh, the edges it looks, it looks really nice and you can you know put these little uh, accessories with anybody else that you would like this is definitely a standout figure in my collection i, I i'm glad that i i, I got this guy uh, i think he is an incredible exclusive like this is a really awesome character and for him to be at the you know only at the disney parks that's kind of that's kind of a that, that that's hard for black series collectors because you know like I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but we just simply can't afford uh, yet to take our family of five to get down to Galaxy's Edge uh, to to see it. Uh, I, I know all, a good many of all my friends have been. They tell me how amazing and awesome it is, and I would love to go. I can't wait to go, and hopefully we get to go soon. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was this is just a great figure, and, I, and I'm kind of sad that it's only available in the parks. It was like I said, it was available for a while on Shop Disney. Uh, I missed out on that. Um, and, uh, so I had to snag this guy off of eBay. So, you know, um, I paid a little more for it than I would in the parks. I think in the parks, he's like around $40, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And I paid about 70 on eBay, uh, for him. So I did definitely have to pay the, uh, the eBay tax for this guy. Um, but I'm honestly, I'm really glad I did because this is an incredible figure and I, I'm glad to have him in my collection and I can't wait to see how Hasbro incorporates Incorporates this guy into the main line at some point. Like I said, we could get him as the uh, magistrate from the Book of Boba Fett. We could get him as, uh, you know, uh, Momo Nadon. We could get him as like a, a plain Ithorian Jedi would be really nice. Um, who knows how we're going to see this guy show up back up in the future, but I'm glad um, to have him in my collection and I can't wait until everybody can get a hold of this mold uh, in the main line. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. I super appreciate it. Please continue to check us out over at Instagram at Saturday Morning Toy Collector. I am the Saturday Morning Toy Collector. I'm your host, Mark, and I will see you in the toy aisles. <laughs>